Hey guys, it's me, Callie. I'm back with the fourth installment from the Gypsy and the Witch's creative journaling journey. This year is flying by. We decided for this month's theme to do uh, magical mythos. So anything from the realm of mythology, which is endless, you know? And even when I began the page, I really didn't know where I was going to go with it. I just let my muse guide me. And I'm really pleased with what came out of it. Um, I wound up with a young fairy princess queen who has found a dragon egg and found her new pet familiar. So I had a lot of fun making this page. And if you're interested in seeing how I created it, stick around and I will show you how I did it. And when you're done, please make sure you check out my gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie, and see what her take on this month's theme was, as well as all our brothers and sisters at the Gypsy and the Witches Facebook group, and I will put all links below. So join us and show me what you guys have come up with. I would love to see it. Stick around. Okay, we guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, I told you that I like to put some masking tape down the center. I could just do the whole journal this way, but I'm just doing it as each page comes up. So this just kind of helps to prevent anything seeping through. And it will all get covered up by the layers um, that we're going to put on here. So... And for this one, I'm not going to gesso this page. I am going to put some wax paper down and try to prevent anything getting through. I have my handy dandy decoupage matte media. I'm going to have to get some more of that. And I'm going to be using some of the paper from my Graphic 45. I still have some of the steampunk spells paper left. So I like the autumn colors. And I think we're just going to collage it down. Um, I'm going to use this. So we're just going to take my beat up old brush that I use for decoupage. down a good layer. As per usual, I don't have a clear idea of where I'm going to take this page. Our theme this month is mythology. And people can interpret that however they'd like, but the first thing I thought of when we discussed it um, was Medusa. And then I thought about Pandora, and then I thought about all the Greek gods and goddesses, and the Egyptian gods and goddesses, and Native American mythology, and, you know, there's so much to choose from. But, we will see. I'm not sure, and again, I'm just going to let the page guide me. Um, I'm going to rip up some of this wonderful paper. Nice and thick. And I'm just going to set some of this down. I debated on which side, which pattern I wanted. So I think I'm going to do both. And if you guys know me, you know I'm a, a purple, blue, green girl. So, um, but I do love earth tones and the fall colors. So, and we are going to put, you know, we're going to paint on top of this and there'll be other layers. So I'm just doing this to kind of get started when I don't know what else to do. I like to just jump on in. So again, I am just laying down some I love this paper. And I 
don't like to spend a lot of money on my art supplies and you know things like that you guys know but once in a while it's nice to splurge on some good stuff so and it's lasted me a long while i've had it for over a year now again just random i'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to come back in over the top. I don't know. Maybe I will do gesso on top. We'll see. Forget you guys can join us, Miss Rita Marie and I, and our brothers and sisters over at the Gypsy and the Witch group on Facebook. We'd love to have you. And we have a different theme every month, and you guys can jump in and join along. So it's been a lot of fun, and we've made a lot of new friends and had a lot of great interaction and feedback, and it's just very cool. So. Thank you to everyone who's joined. And boy, this is not calling to me right now. But, you know, sometimes you just got to go with your voice that tells you to keep going. So, I'm going to do that. And I can almost guarantee you guys that I will be painting over this uh, somehow. I wanted to leave big blotches of white, but <laughs> something is telling me to keep going with this here. So I'm listening to it. And yeah, maybe I'll come in with my gelatos or my watercolor crayons. You never know. You just never know. And that's been really one of the best things about doing this collaboration with Miss Rita. For me, it's been to just take a stretch and jump in and, you know, to do this on camera is uh, a little nerve-wracking sometimes, you know? But I just got to take the plunge, and I'm so glad that I have. So, okay, you guys, I am going to leave a little bit of white coming through just in some spots. I'll add a few more here, random. And then, again, when this dries... I'll be back with, maybe I'll use my watercolor crayons, let's see, we shall see, and don't you love how I always say I'm going to stop and then I keep going, come on, it wouldn't be me without it, right, it wouldn't be me. Uh, this is great because it just reinforces the paper. And I love collage, and I don't do enough of it. I used to do a lot of collage, and I have some items in my home that I've had for years that I did. Um, so that's something that, you know, there's always so much I want to do, so much I want to do. Okay, you guys, I think that this is enough for now, and I'm going to let this dry, and I will see you back here, and we'll figure out where we're going to take it from there, okay? See you in just a minute. Okay, guys, I'm back. This is dry, and I think that, you know, if you guys know me, I like to put layers upon layers, so 
I really want to rip some of this just cardstock up and I'm gonna put some of this plain brown um, same thing I'm gonna use my decoupage and just a few strips and I'm gonna go across this time in random places so once again handy dandy decoupage map media and I'll rip these across I'll let that dry and when that's all dry I'm gonna do a light coat of some white gesso so but I'll see you back I'll see you back here when that's done and in the meantime I took a piece of my Canson mixed media paper and I really had a hard time deciding what I wanted to use as a focal image I went back and forth I really thought about doing Medusa there were so many things to choose from uh, in mythology, you know, and so anyway, I am a fan of dragons and I always have been and I love them so much and I incorporated, I just did a sketch out drawing of this kind of a fairy, wood nymph, uh, elven, queen, warrior, goddess and her baby pet dragon. So I'm going to finish. I'm using just um, colored pencil, and I'll do that. I may do something different with her dress. I may pull in some other, I don't know, real cloth, or I'm not sure yet. Um, but while I'm waiting for this part to dry, I'll finish coloring her up and him, and then I'll be cutting them out, and we'll be adding them here. And so that's that's kind of where I'm going for now. So that'll be, I'll be working on that while I'm in between waiting for layers to dry. So like I said, we're going to put these down, quick coat of light white gesso on top of that, and I'll see you back here when that's dry and I have the girl all colored up. See you in a minute. Okay, guys, here's where we're at. I glued down the brown paper bag. I did a really light watered down coat of white gesso. I'm not loving this at all right now. I'm not really sure where to go. I don't want to cover up all of the print underneath with some heavy acrylic paint. So I thought that my next step, I would just go over with some of these um, Tim Holtz Distress Stains. I have Broken China and Faded Jean just to kind of wash it a little bit and still let the patterns come through. And then on the t after I'm, that dries, I'm going to go in with one of my Andy Skinner stencils. This one is Snake's Web. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do a spray over this or actually just sponge, but I'll figure it out. Um, one of the two. And then my progress, I just, I'm not finished with the girl yet, but this is where we're at so far. Um... If you can get in the light here, let's see. I love how the dragon's coming out. I'm just now starting to add some detail to her dress. Um, I'm going to try to make it look a little like dragon skin. And I'm just kind of adding some embellishments onto her skirt. I debated on whether or not I wanted to put actual cloth or ribbons. I'm, I don't think I'm going to go there. Um, I gave her an onk tattoo. Uh, and... I'm going to finish her hair, and I used for the first time my silk acrylic glazes, and I love these. I just love them. This one is Snapdragon, and I also used Jasmine, and this Sky Blue, the Pretty Peridot, and Emperor's Gold. I adore these and I can't wait to use them more and more. Um, they went on wonderfully and I was really excited about how vibrant all the colors were. And as I was kind of, you know, um, wiping my brush off in the corner down here, I decided to make a dragon's egg and I'm going to cut that out into an egg shape and crack it. And I'll either have her have a piece of the egg in her hand or the egg shell will be falling down, but I'm also debating on using some real egg shell on there uh, for texture, but we'll see. 
So once I finish up with her detail, I'm going to cut her out, cut everything out, and then we'll put her down. But I'll, I'll get back to you before that happens. But that's just where we're at for now. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, guys, this is starting to really come together now. I love this part in the process where it just it gets exciting for me. So basically what I did here was I went in, like I said, with the distress stains, uh, both of them randomly, just all over the whole background. And then when that dried, I did go in with the Andy Skinner stencil and I did it, you know, all over top and bottom. And it was too yellow for my taste at the top. Um, I used this first. I used the mister and I used it on a makeup sponge. So I just sponged it through the stencil. I sprayed the mister on the sponge and then sponged it through the stencil. And I wanted to add some blue at the top and make it a little darker, almost like it was a night sky. So I did the same technique with these two, uh, turquoise and primary cyan. That's what you see on this sponge. So I did that there. And then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a border. So I just took a random floral stamp that I have and good old black stays on. And I kept it very faint. I went around the edges and I'm going to go back over it with one of my pit pens um, with the brush tip. And then I finished pretty much all of her and I didn't give her feet or anything. They're just going to kind of, we're going to pretend they're under her skirt. So one thing that I noticed, but I hope to remedy, I didn't really realized that I was making the dragon and the background and his wings the same color and I'm afraid they're gonna get lost but once I outline everything I think I'll be able to make him stand out uh, if not I don't know I, I really don't want to change his color so uh, we'll see I may have to if I'm not happy with it so I'm going to glue her down as well as here's our dragon shell and I cracked it and I thought that I would just kind of have this in her hand it kind of looks like a boomerang or just you know like that and have this down here and maybe do some glitter or something that looks like, you know, aha, he's born, you know, that kind of thing. And then I might just ink up the edges. So I'll see you back here when that's done. Uh, the only other thing I may do are some random spots in the background. I'm not sure. I, I tend to want to keep going and keep going and keep going. You know, it's just a journal page, but you know, the, these become your babies, right? So I do want to do some more detail on her hair and, you know, um, stuff like that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this darker around the edges, glue her down, glue the shell down, outline everybody, and I'll see you back here when that's done. Okay, guys, I think we're done here. Again, it's hard for me to know when to stop, but I'm really pleased with the way this came out. You know, these things are always better in person because of the texture. And once again, I covered up completely the background that we started out with. But that's okay. Again, it adds a lot to the texture. And even if you can't see the patterns of the paper underneath. But I think it came out really cute. And like I said to you guys, I went over the stamped border with my um, Faber-Castell pit pen. Thank you, Kat, for that. <laughs> And I outlined everything, the girl, the shell, the dragon. I did leave him blue. And I think it's just, you know, interesting for your eye to kind of seek it out a little bit. Um, I added a little crown to her, some detail on her outfit. 
gave her a choker. Um, I wanted to kind of do an oval of gold, like you were kind of looking into another world. But, nah, I, I don't know. So I just rubbed a little bit of this um, DecoArt Elegant Finish metallic paint in champagne gold. And I did that on a sponge around. And it just gave it a nice shimmer. Um, which actually muted the kind of the border. And I like that effect. So I was happy with the way it turned out. And I also went over her skin tone with one of my Tim Holtz Distress Markers. Uh, this one's in Antique Linen. And I just like the, the look of that. And I also did her lips in um, Spun Sugar. And what else? Added some detail just with a uniball in black and also a good old, you know, you can't go do any journal page without a signal pen in white. So I did that. I added some splatters to the background with the DecoArt misters. And then once everything totally dried, I gave it a quick coat of this Americana acrylic sealer in matte. And there you have it, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I encourage you to join Miss Rita and I at the Gypsy and the Witch Facebook group where we unveil a new theme every month and really look forward to seeing what you guys are doing as well. So I hope you have a beautiful month and I'll see you next month with another page. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.